Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Boulder Canyon. We are going to continue on with our planting, but before I do too much with the planting, uh, or with like letting the hired help do the planting, what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to go over to about here, and I'm going to start doing... Just a run around the edge so that we can, like, tidy up that outside edge and make sure that everything is reached properly and it, it just looks generally a little bit better. So we'll run all the way down here. That should give us just enough room across the top end of the field for the tractor to be able to turn around as well and tidy up that little strip down the side there going towards the big stone. Once we've done that, we've got bales to go and collect, and we've got a new tractor at the shop that we want to bring back here to the yard. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I was thinking of doing the gathering up all of the bales, and then going over to the shop and bringing the tractor back after I've gathered up all the bales. It doesn't really matter which way round I do it, um because yeah we, we've got to wait for this one to be able to finish anyway so i'm actually thinking that we, we'll just get this one going and then we'll run over to the shop and we'll get that other tractor back i want to get, i want to get that one back here to the yard so that we've got our fourth tractor back here and ready to be used and then once we've done that bit then we can get going with gathering up the bales and doing all the other bits that we want to do it also means that we'll have another tractor back here that we can be dealing with the cattle. So while we're doing jobs in the fields, we've got a tractor that is available to use the front loader and like just do stuff with the cattle and also with the pigs that we're going to be starting to buy very, very soon. So we've only got $6,000 left, which is not a great deal on the grand scheme of things, but it's better than no dollars at all. I think we're doing I think we're doing all right as far as money is concerned. I'm just going to bring that one in over there. I'm actually going to deliberately move that in a bit further than I need to on there so it should overlap a bit going up through and just absolutely make sure that I get every inch of the field. Right, that's fine. That can stay there. I want to get you and I want to put you straight onto this trailer. I don't need to worry about using the shop tractor for doing this. We can just use our own tractor. Our brand shiny new Deutz Agro Star. Well, it's not brand shiny new at all. It's a second-hand piece of rubbish. Um, this tractor is just a piece of trash. I dislike this tractor intensely. And I really, really dislike the fact that I'm having to buy two of them. We're not using this tractor. I'm not even going to have the mod enabled on our next series. Right? I refuse to have this mod again. Not having it. This is one of the very few tractors that I've driven in real life that I genuinely despised. Like, almost every tractor I've ever driven, I've enjoyed driving. There's been positive points to it. But this one tractor, I really didn't like it. It was it, it was just an unpleasant experience all around driving this tractor. I didn't like it. I don't know why. Because it wasn't, like... I mean, yeah, it wasn't the, the strongest of tractors. But, um... I just didn't like the tractor. There was something about it that I just didn't like. I didn't get on with it. I didn't like it. Um, and, yeah, there are very few tractors that I've driven in life that I, I didn't, re you know, I really had an intense dislike for. I'm the, I, I like machinery. I like driving stuff. Um, so, yeah, it was it was a little bit unusual, but I, I didn't like that tractor. I, I absolutely didn't like it. It probably had something to do with the fact that um, it was... You know, the only tractor on the farm that had next to no air conditioning whatsoever. And it was really, really hot that summer that I was having to use it excessively. Um, it didn't work very well. The visibility on it was very, very poor. I was being asked to do a job the tractor wasn't particularly suited for. All the other tractors, they could cope with the grain trailers that were being pulled. Uh, because I was the better driver out of the students that worked on the farm i was given the poorer tractor because the others couldn't actually drive it at all and the manager needed things to keep moving um he did apologize to me but yeah you, you, you take your apology and you can put it where the sun don't shine because they still didn't change the fact that i was stuck driving this track i was being punished because i was the um better operator i had it 
you know, I, I, trying to say that without sounding big-headed or anything, but th that's the reason I was put driving the poorer tractor. Now, other farms I've worked on, if you're a poorer operator, you get given the poorer tractor so that you do less damage. But he wasn't concerned about the damage, he just wanted to keep things moving, and the other operators couldn't get the trailers loaded properly because of how you had to do it with this little small tractor you you couldn't look through you couldn't look over the top of the um trailer for loading the grain very well you had to look through a tiny little viewing window on the trailer and you had like this really 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 small little bit that you could look through in order to see what was going on and unless like you you, you really had to work to make sure that you got that right otherwise you couldn't see where the grain was going into the combine uh, uh, from the combine into the trailer and you couldn't load your trailer properly um, which slowed everything down so I could do it like he, he gave everybody a test on it he didn't actually say that he was testing he just let everybody have a go with it and and they didn't like it they, they couldn't get on with it they couldn't get the trailer loaded up properly um, and so then, yeah, I, I, I spent a, a great deal of time stuck driving this horrible thing up and down the road. Well, they all had the nice tractors. They, unable to drive the poor tractor, were given the really nice ones, the ones that were generally dished out. You know, you, you, you had the, the, the brand new tractors that were a year old, and I had this rubbishy old thing that had been around for a century, and... um. That's what I got lumbered with for half the summer. Because I was able to drive it. And the others just drove so poorly that they got rewarded for their poor skills by being given the best tractors on the farm. And that did not sit well with me. That did not sit well with me at all. And I made absolutely certain that the manager knew that I was not happy about this. Um, but then I... He, he, he didn't really worry too much about things like that. It was just, that's how it is. You deal with it and, and move on. And um, if you don't like it, well, that's just too bad. Um, yeah, it, it is literally, it's, it's tough. That's how it is. Um, I mean, admittedly, the other ones, the students usually had the option for staying on after the harvest in order to help clear all the straw off of the fields. Um and he didn't give them the option. He basically told them that, no, you're not good enough drivers to be able to do it, and refused them an extra six weeks' work, which they really, really wanted. Um, and so I was left doing all of that, along with a few other jobs as well. So, I mean, it... get I, I, Yeah, that, that, that wasn't necessarily a great thing either, because it meant I had to do... All of the clearing of the straw before I got on with all of the other things. Did, I mean, ultimately, it did mean that I had six weeks of extra overtime, um, which was uh, six weeks of a lot of extra money, admittedly. Um, which, so it, it wasn't all bad. It definitely wasn't all bad, but I did have to earn that six weeks of extra overtime. It was a lot of overtime. There, there was a lot, but um, I, I had to earn it, and I had to earn it big time. Anyway. We've got our new tractor back here. We've got the new one that I really don't like. It's new to us. It's second hand. It's rubbish. Um, we will, just for a second, I'm going to go there and... I don't want to reset you. There, that's the one. I want to reset that one back to the shop so that the people from the shop have come and collected that one and taken it back. And they've come and collected the trailer and taken it back. Okay. Um, let me jump into you second and we'll put you back up the road up here so that you're out of the way you're ready for um doing your next milk delivery which is what we need you here for and then we can focus on other things right so you you, you go over here just like that you, you can stop there there we go you're ready to roll and now i can get on with this one Right, so we need to be gathering up bales. We've got large square bales on the auto load select right there. We're going to go with 1.3 rounds like that. And I'm going to start loading. I've got a round bale that's rolled over to the cattle over there. Now, we can take 30 round bales on this trailer rather than the 24 that you get with um, the square bales. So, again, 
this is saving time. It's um, it, it's a positive. So we've got quite a few positives with this with the round bales over the square bales. Um, not all of them. Like yes, it was slower doing this, but I reckon that our next harvest, when we do the front-mounted mower and hired help situation, it's going to end up being faster, which means that we're going to end up saving more money. We're going to save more time, and therefore more money. And it's 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 just going to be quicker. It's going to be better all around. I'll bring you in through here. There's only one bale, I think, that rolled right back into the trees. I don't see any others. You see any others? I don't think there is. Uh, so there's only one that went all the way over there. We'll run along the top now, and we'll gather up these bales up here, and then we'll work our way down the far side. Um, it would be a bit more interesting, I think, using this tractor with this trailer with silage bales. <laughs> That's, there's, there's no doubt about that. This is not something that I would like to do. I uh, used to, when I had to drive this tractor, um, I mean, it was grain trailers mostly, although I did do a little bit of hauling straw with it as well, um, and load of work at the same time, is to go out to the small fields. Like the big fields, the load all would go out, the telehandler, and the bales would be stacked up in the field in a great big stack and that would that would just sort of be the end of it and then they would be collected later on however the smaller fields that we did we didn't bother doing that i would be sent out or sometimes it would be someone else used to drive the tractor but he actually really liked the tractor he, he liked um doing that job but he didn't always do it so sometimes i'd be sent to do it um and you'd go out to the field with a trailer and the front loader with the um, grab attachment on for the bales. It was like a flat eight grab attachment, you know, the one that sits down on top of the bales and picks them up. Um, and we would put the trailer in the field at the top of the hill. As all of these small fields were all on the side of a hill, it was like a, a, a line of long, long line of small fields. And... Like the, so they were fairly long strip fields. It did take a little while to clear them. You'd park the trailer at the top of the field because the entire field was on a slope and right down to the bottom. So you couldn't park the trailer at the bottom because that was actually on the ste on a steeper part of the hill. So you, it wasn't an option to park it down the bottom. You had to park it at the top. So you go and take the trailer up to the top of the field and park it there. And then you, once you'd done that, you would... Right, hang on. Let's just unload this one. So we want to unload onto the trailer like that. Allow them to settle and then put the straps on. And now we've got to get this one down the hill. We'll take it out onto the road and we will drive down the road. We don't want to do it any other way. Any other way, I think, is just asking for trouble. But there we have a trailer load of round silage bales and I think that looks actually pretty good I'm liking the look of this we'll bring it out over here bring it along over this side and we'll come down here um there we go look at that look at that that's that's looking absolutely brilliant I'm gonna make sure I have that as my screenshot because I think it looks pretty good now we need to get it down the hill so, yeah, you, you, you'd unhitch the trailer at the top of the field, then you would go and get the bales, you, you run down, up and down the hill, grabbing the bales, carrying them up to the top of the hill, putting them on the trailer until you've loaded up your trailer. You would normally get about a trailer load in the field. You may get a few extra bales, so you just, you know, a couple of extra for the next load, but um, generally there was a trailer load or just under in each of these small fields. Um, and then once you'd gone, once you'd loaded it, then you would hitch the trailer back up and you would slowly, slowly make your way down the hill and out the field. The gates were all at the bottom and you couldn't just go whizzing out um, because once you got out of the gate, you had to go through at an angle. You had to line up your angle beforehand and you had to go through at an angle. You couldn't just go at any old angle along the bottom because it was quite steep along the very bottom of the field. And if you went at too steep an angle, the trailer would tip over. If you drove straight out of the gateway, you wouldn't be able to get round the corner because you came out onto, like, a track. It's a bit like this track here, except that, you know, it's coming down a hill like that onto a track like this, yeah? 
you couldn't go straight down and get round the corner without driving off the bottom edge of the track. The bottom ed edge of the track was not into a field like that. It was into a steep gully. Um, so if you went over the edge of it, you would tip the tractor and the trailer over. So you had to go out very, very carefully. You had to, you had to get just the, the, the right angles. So you had to approach the gateway um, from sort of about a 45 degree angle like that. And then go across the slope. Although this isn't going across the slope, this is lining up straight. But you'd go across the slope um, to start going out the gateway. And then once you got out, you would take the tractor across the track as far as you possibly could. I want to go over here. I want to demonstrate this. So it's sort of, you, you, you'd get out and say that grey track there. So you've come down the hill, straight down. You, you want to go straight down to start with. And then you get towards where the gateway is going to be. And then you'd bring it across sort of like that. Now you could do about 45 degrees, which would line the gateway up just perfect. Uh, any more than that, and you wouldn't be able to get through the gateway properly anyway, and any less than that, and you possibly wouldn't be able to get round the corner. So it was a tight squeeze. Why they didn't make the gateways wider, I don't know. We used to put stock in a bit at the bottom, but you didn't have stock in the fields because they were always arable, so they could have done things differently. But you, anyway, you came out, and you, you sort of got to about this far, and then you would start turning your wheel, and you'd straighten up like that, the trailer would very, it would lean over rather alarmingly and then it would start to straighten up again because as you came down onto the track it would straighten up. Um, so and you had to get that angle just right. If you didn't then you'd hit the gatepost and you'd be very unpopular and also, um, well, that was about the, the worst that would happen is you'd hit the gatepost and you, you would be unpopular. I, I pride myself on the fact that I didn't hit any gateposts. I, I, I take that as a matter of pride, that I didn't hit any gateposts. Um, and I managed to get out of those fields every single time without incident. Even though I despised the tractor I was using, I still did it without incident. I did just fine doing that. Um, so I was, I was pleased with my progress on there. I was, I was pleased with my performance on it. Right, I'm going to bring this one out round. We'll very carefully turn round now so that we can get the second line of bales unloaded. Bring you around that way, like that, and then we'll go back and we'll get some more bales. If I pull too far like that, I'll end up tipping this trader over. Um, no, I didn't tip over like that. I did actually tip a trailer over. I only tipped one over. Um, it's not really a, a a thing to be proud of that I tipped a trailer over, but I, I did tip one over. And that was because I went over the old plough line um, and I, I caught it. Right, 71% full, so all of that silage in there is still not even completely full. But that will keep us going with silage for a very, very long time. We're not going to have to worry about silage for a long time now. And if we take a look in here, I've got um, here... Silage is currently under 200. We have gone above 300 per thousand litres for silage before now. So we want to leave that one climbing and see what it gets up to. If it's above 250, I'm happy. I've always said if it's above 250, I'm happy with that. How are you doing? You see, excuse me, you seem to be doing really well, actually. I don't know why he's, da he's dancing a little bit there when he's picking it up and down. But uh, overall, he does seem to be doing all right. So we'll, we'll just assume that he's he's going to keep doing all right. This one, we'll go back up and we'll get the rest of the bales. So then that job is finished. And then we can concentrate on doing some other work. So we've we've gathered 60, uh, 30 bales already. This is going to make 60 bales from this field. We didn't go and get any bales. Did we get any bales? I don't remember if we... I don't think we actually gathered up any bales out of this field. I think we have all of the bales from this crop are just sitting in this field. So we've we've had uh, 30 so far. This is going to take it up to 60 bales. I don't know if we will fill the trailer up completely this time around. We might. Because I don't think we went and gathered the... Did we get the bales the first time around? We may have done. I may have already... I may have gone round the edge and gathered up some. 
Well, I don't think I did. I think we just did a quick test run with the baler along the bottom edge of the field. Now, we didn't bother doing any more, did we? We, we kind of just left it as it was and um, didn't worry about going and collecting any more bales until after we e everything had been completely finished. don't remember now. Right, well, it, it, it doesn't matter either way. Um, I think we are going to get a full trailer load. I've got a feeling that we will actually be able to get another full trailer load out of this. And then there's going to be one or two left over afterwards. So we've got 30 bales that we're going to be able to sell. We're not going to keep any extras. And then next time we will sell some more. So having these extra bales, having these that we can sell, 30 bales that we can sell um, at... Well, even if we say 250, if we set the target at 250 and we sell these bales for 1,000 per thousand liters uh, 250 sorry per thousand liters that means that a 8,000 liter bale will sell for how much um wait uh two uh, five 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 it'd be 500 per bale won't it two, no it won't two, 250 per thousand liters would be two 250 per thousand liters would be a thousand dollars per bale that would be right yeah thousand dollars per bale these bales will be two thousand dollars a piece so that'll be 60 grand for a trailer load that's not too shabby sixty thousand dollars for a trailer load right i've got one two three four five six seven eight bales left in the field and this is the second load of 30 so we got 68 bales out of that field if i didn't go and gather any up beforehand 68 bales out of the field that is actually pretty good i think I'd say that overall, that that's, that's, that's actually really good. 68 bales. Right? If we were selling all of those at over 250, that's well over $100,000. That's actually, well, uh, 68. That's uh, 120. Um, let's unload those onto there. Uh, 120, $136,000. $136,000 worth of silage bales that we could get out of this field that is absolutely brilliant that is that is genuinely brilliant and amazing and wonderful and we have now come to the end of it so i'm just going to stop you right there i'm going to start you up a second and i'm going to just start for what is going on with this tractor today is doing something weird with our second wheels here today i don't quite know why it's doing all of that but anyway um i just i want to go in here now it's 197 we will just double check that we have got all planting everything's planted it looks neat and neat and tidy neat and tidy neat and tidy and clean i don't think we need to worry about coming back to do anything extra on there so we go back to the normal five times speed and we need to get some fertilizer on this field next. So we can either do fertilizer with this tractor or we can use our new tractor and do the fertilizer. I'm going to use this one to do the fertilizing. I'm actually just going to leave the seed drill right here in the middle of the yard. I'm just going to leave it like that. And then I'll run over and I'll get the fertilizer spinner and we will start doing fertilizer in the crop field. Then we can go back to getting a bit more in the way of bales. We've just got the last few to load up and bring back to the yard. There's only six of them there. We get those last six bales, bring them back, and then we can start getting the um, oh the 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 the, the last six brought back. Yeah, we, we, well, start fast forwarding times. Is essentially, what we want to do. We we just need to skip forward until such time as we have got some. Ooh, go like that and skip forward until we've got more fertilizer that we can put on and also we've got some weeds poking through we're going to need weeds poking through so that we can go through and do our um weed killing we can put the herbicide on now it was pointed out a little while ago that i've been saying this that we need to have the weeds poking through so that we can do the herbicide and somebody said that well actually you you keep forgetting that you can put it on as preventative treatment i'm not forgetting i know we can put it on as preventative treatment however what you can't do is use hired help 
to put the herbicide on as a preventative treatment. If you put it on without weeds there, or if you try to put the stuff on when you're using seasons, you have to do it yourself. You can't use hired help to do it. I mean, yeah, if you want to use course play, course play will allow you to do it, but I don't like course play, and I have no intention of using it in a series. Um, if you're using seasons, so seasons doesn't come into this because we're not using it, but if you are, the weeds come through in like little patches. You can't use hired help to treat the weeds in seasons. And that's something that really irritates me about seasons, is that if you want to treat weeds, you've got to manually do it yourself. And, and uh, I really don't like that. It's, it's forcing you to go and do it like that. And I... Uh, it really bugs me that it's removing hired help as any kind of option. You cannot use hired help to put a preventative treatment on either. It will only treat the weeds. It won't allow you to just go and spray the field to stop the weeds coming up. Now, obviously, if we've got the weeds on the field, if we haven't got the weeds on the field um, and we go and spray, it will stop them from coming up. And obviously, we can wait until the weeds come up, and then we can do it as a treatment. But it doesn't always work out exactly as you would hope. It doesn't always work out that you can go and do it like that. So sometimes you're left in a situation where you've got weeds really late coming up, and you're not able to get onto the field and treat it with the herbicide in time unless you go through and you manually treat it beforehand. And also, it's the same with the weed rake, um, where you go through, you can only use it in the first growth stage of the crop. You can't use it at any other growth stage in the crop. Um, so unless the weeds come through in the first growth stage of the crop, you're not going to be able to do anything, because you can't even use the, um, the, the weed, not the, the the rake the the, the weeder the, the you know the, you know you know the mechanical weeder you can't use that one as a preventative treatment that one you can only use to treat weeds that are in their first growth stage while the crop is either in the freshly planted stage like this or is in the first growth stage so if you've got um the plants on fast growth chances are you actually being able to use that mechanical rake uh, effectively at all you you I would guess you're looking at about maybe one crop in five that you're able to get the thing to work um, you, you've got the conditions available that it's that it can be used because of how fast time is ticking through um, and how fast the crops are growing when you're using fast growth rate on your crops if you've got slow growth rate then it does increase the chances it still doesn't happen every time as we know, we, we're using slow growth rates on ours, um, so we don't have optimal conditions. If we were using a mechanical rake, we still don't, we, we're not able to use that every time. Half the time, we've got to put care wheels on, and um, we've got the crop has, has like grown on a little bit further than we would like. Let me just bring this one up here. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. We'll, we'll put this one going up here. Um, it just bugs me that you can't go and use the... Oops. It would help if I pressed H to do this. I need to move it over a little tiny bit anyway. Um, there, let's try that. Uh, it, it just bugs me that you can't go and use the hired help to put the weed killer on as a preventative treatment. It would be nice if you could. I'm hoping we've got enough fertilizer for the bottom part of the field down here. We don't have enough fertilizer to be able to go and do the grass field. Although, fortunately, the grass field will only need one coat of fertilizer on it in order to be able to finish. This one down here will need a second coat once we have gone and done everything else. But we have no money, so we can't buy any more fertilizer for a moment. We went and splashed it all out on a new tractor. We have got this money right here. This is potentially $60,000 or more sitting right here on this trailer that we'll be able to take over that sell point right over there and sell. I suspect it's going to be first thing in the morning rather than right now. So we're going to have to just bring this down here and we'll unload it. I'm not sticking any more into the feeder. We've got enough in there for now. So I will bring you down to that point right there. I will take the straps off. We will load it again and we will go like that. And then I will unload into the yard and I will dump those down there. 
We'll run back over and we will go and get the last six bales that are lying in the fields. And as soon as we've done that, that's it. We're finished. We've actually done all of the harvest and the planting once again. All we need to do is just finish up with a little bit of fertilizing and, and stuff like that. Just a minor, minor little detail just to, just to finish off with. Um... And then we'll be able to see on our next harvest how well it works out having the extra tractor. How much extra use we're going to have out of it. I think it's I think it's going to prove an exceptionally useful machine. Now I said six. There isn't. There's eight over here, isn't there? Uh, yes, there is. There's eight extra bales. So that is... I did get it right the first time. Um, so yeah, we, we've got 60 grand and then we've got these eight over here, which is potentially another 16,000, so 76,000. If we get a little bit more than 250 per thousand, we have gone in excess of 300 in the past, but I would rather have the money sooner than later this time round. So I'm, you know, we should actually be, I'll do it to 60 times because I should be 30 times just while I'm loading. Um, now that I'm not planting or anything. So this will tick us along a little bit faster towards nightfall. There we go. Oh! Oh, fantastic. The weeds are coming through already. Look at that. That is absolutely brilliant. We'll go back to five times on here. The weeds are now working their way across the map. And we've got weeds here. So if we had a rake, if we had the mechanical rake, we could do that without having to spend any money on herbicide. We've got optimal conditions. That is actually rather unusual. I meant to just unload this onto the trailer. Uh, like that. Oh, well, I've done it now. Uh, that is optimal conditions right there. That's, that's what we would want. And then we could go and we could actually put some... Uh, we, we could treat that field for weeds without having to spend any money, without having to apply herbicide. That would be absolutely fantastic if we could do that. If we take a look in the shop, what do we got in here? Power harrows, planters, seeders, fertilizer, crop protection, weeders right here. So we've got the in-game stuff. That one is 45,000, 15 meters wide. That one right there is 12 meters wide. This one does allow you to plant grass at the same time. Um, this can only be used in the first growing stages of crops. I don't really get the advantage of having that weed during crops and have it plant at the same time. Because I don't think that, well, I don't think that weeds are preventative. And then I got that little tiny one there for 1,000. It's only two meters wide. Uh, that would take a long time to work its way through the field. These, uh, these cost a fortune, though. Like, these do cost an absolute fortune. That's nine meters wide there. That's 12 meters. That's 15 meters. It'd be nice to have one of them, but they, they are expensive. This one at $1,000. I mean, yeah, two meters wide does mean that uh, it's highly unlikely that we'd have it going long enough to be completely effective, to be honest. Um, I wonder if we could, though. I wonder if we could actually make that. What are you doing? I'm looking at this. And I'm wondering exactly at what stage of this hired helps childhood was it dropped on its head that's the only conclusion that i can make here is that at some point the unfortunate individual as a small child was dropped on its head um unless you can come up with an alternative explanation as to why he's just in the middle of the field driving around in random circles uh, the weed, yeah, they're making their way across the field. If we just leave it, it will spread right the way across the field, and those weeds will take over everything. Um, that's good. It's whether I want to go and sell something immediately. Wait, here, silage. 207, it's coming up. I'm not going to be able to buy anything until tomorrow, by which time it's going to be too late. The two-meter weeder is it's just going to take too long to do the field isn't it i'm not effectively going to be able to weed that field with a two meter wide weeder 
There goes the next section. It's got to work its way across the entire map. And that's why it's taking so long to work through in those stages. So, I mean, it'll get there eventually, but it, it, it is taking a bit of time. Um, let me have a look here again. We, we've gone over time. We've gone over time now. I might have a look and just see if there's some other options available for these weeders right here. So, that one there, 12k. They're saying 12k. This one doesn't have a speed written on it. And it is only 1,150. Very, very tempted to try this out. I'm very, very tempted to try this out. I'll take you forward a bit. You can just put that last little bit of fertilizer on. We've still got half a tank of fertilizer. I may have enough to go and do the grass field, to be honest. I may actually have enough to do that grass field. Right. You can stop there. Helper F has completed their task. Right. You will drive back over this way. I'm going to deal with this next week. So get into the comment section. Do you think I should try just selling, say, those first eight bales? A lot cheaper than we would otherwise get them. And take the money that we get from there by a small weeder. Bring that one back and start weeding this field. Do you think that I should try doing that or not? Get into the comment section and maybe we could start. That could be like our first project for next week. Um, we just start that one going. We'll even have the hired help working overnight. Although we, norm we, we do, we'll still skip the night. So he may not get to finishing it, but it could save us having to put herbicide on the entire field. It might be worth a try. It could be worth a try. We'll, we'll have to see. So anyway... If you enjoyed this episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.